All right, we're going to do a classic unboxing of a pretty darn cool vehicle. One of the most scale uh, vehicles around is the RC four wheel drive Miller Motorsports Rock Racer, ready to run, brushless, two speed, locking diffs. And this was introduced about six months ago, but it quickly came out of stock and now it's in stock. So now I have my own to really play with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it right now, show you what's up, and then take it outside, see the top speed, do some jumps and whatnot, and then we're gonna upgrade it, upgrade the, uh, you know, whatever needs upgrading. So let me know if you have any ideas, and if this is something you're interested in, click on the links in the description, that's how RC Review uh, pays the bills uh, through the affiliate links, and it will help us out. 16.2 miles an hour. Here we go. Uh, it's already upside down or kind of open. Manual, book. Ooh, got some double A's. I already has some double A's handy, but uh, this uh, nice book. Uh, some decals, okay. And then I already got my cutter handy. And snip, snip. And I heard this radio is a pretty cool Dumbo RC. Craziest name in the business, uh, but it offers a lot for the money. So I'm glad RC four wheel drive went with that. They got the foam, 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 and then, oh, okay. Interesting. So we will see. Oh, I love the packaging. But a lot of travel on this guy. And it does have these, I believe, 2.2 wheels and tires. It's a rock racer. So it's built for speed. And in the beginning, I was this was one thing I was curious about. Some reviewers were complaining that uh, they didn't have a lot of oil, not a lot of uh, damping. And it still doesn't look like it has a lot of oil. Mm -hmm. And you know, you don't need heavy oil because this is kind of a rock racer style. Um, for scale, they want like... That motion going on but um, I think a, a little more would be cool Eric Miller is kind of the the king of the king of the hammers king of the king and he has a vehicle that's been going on for I don't know eight nine years that it's dominating that king of the hammers in uh, California central southern California and this is a depiction a licensed fully licensed version of what he has really cool yellow color all the sponsors oh we got some mirrors right here and what it does have is very long shocks with a lot of suspension and limiting straps so uh, and then on the rear is a trailing arm suspension with limiting straps as well and then i believe what they got is a stabilizer bar uh-huh so we'll see how this handles and something quite special is it has uh, locking, unlocking diffs, and two-speed transmission, and it has a brushless motor for a kind of a decent price, around five, 500, 550, I believe. And it's not easy to work on because, you know, like all cage-style vehicles, you gotta work under the cage. Nothing is, you just can't pop it out. It's integral to how this thing is built, okay? And reportedly, the engine is really cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's in there. I wish I had a popping hood. Oh, that's maybe that's a mod I should do, huh? Maybe magnetize this thing. Uh, just so you could always show off the engine because that's always a key part of these things. And it has a uh, axle mounted servo that's uh, not very well protected. <laughs> it's kind of like a bumper. And I like this cage right here in the front. Jeep's, Jeep body started out as a Jeep. And on the rear, it's interesting. So. Big travel, limiting straps, and when you bottom out, you have these extra uh, shocks, bottom out shocks. Mm -hmm. And I heard that plastic was coming off in the early days, and now uh, that's uh, that's in there. Uh, oh, so I'm gonna do some jumps today. Uh, nothing fancy today. 
uh, but let me uh, put on a battery. Where is the battery? That's the thing with these new vehicles. You don't know how to um, how to work it, right? Ooh, very nice intake right there. Uh huh. This has got to be the battery here. Oh, receivers in the back. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, I remember now. I remember. I remember. I saw this somewhere. It's on the side panel. So here is a body clip. Okay. Uh huh. Not that. And it's got an XT60. That's super cool. I already made a modification. So I had these RC Pro KC lights. And boom, I got them. They're made of metal, so pretty cool. And I just kind of wired them into the receiver and it's working. So let's see the operation of this thing. It has a handy dandy switch right here. Uh huh, boom, and you see the lights. And I don't think it has lights built in, which is kind of unfortunate because it has a, oh my God, it has a nice, uh, lens right here and a lot of lenses on the rear so just serves uh, serves us right that we i put a light bar really nice fans in the back the mirror here i think i'm gonna run it like this it would be nice to do a cutout like right here so at least people can see that engine bay i just don't want to ruin that thing but i will try and then let's turn it on so steering it's quite good Nice and smooth. My calibrated hand says about 160 ounce inches. And then quite a few options on this guy. So I'm running 3S right now. Okay, so currently running rear wheel drive with a switch. And this is the low gear. Pretty smooth drive drain, huh? Pretty quiet. On, uh, it's on full drag brake, and then with the flick of the switch here, it goes to two speed. Quite a bit faster. Still on full drag brake. Okay, so that is open diffs. So you can see I'm holding one of them. And then with this switch, lock diffs. Okay, so I think I gotta adjust the trim for my two-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, but uh, we'll take it out for a ride right now, all right? Okay, and the shakedown ride, it wasn't quite going into four-wheel drive mode, so I opened the servo box and I saw the middle servo, it was working okay, and leading where that connection goes, it goes to this little cable right here, and it just wasn't returning, so uh, lubed it a little bit and then it was fine. And here's a little shakedown ride. Pretty smooth, but I noticed a couple things right away. One is it seems to be on full drag brake, and it's a little a little bothersome because it uh, it disorients itself once you let off the throttle. It just goes on full brake mode. Uh, you can flip over, and uh, it kind of steers in a strange direction. Uh, and another thing is it's super bouncy. I have to open the shocks and that will come shortly. Also the punch was not as great as I expected from a precious motor. So we'll see if we can fix all those little issues. But it uh, seems to be working well. Okay, how we do the motor is it actually is programmed with a Hobbywing card. Just plug into the ESC where the fan was plugged in. And then follow the uh, table on the manual so definitely i took out all drag brake zero percent i put the punch all the way to the max and i also increased the timing make sure i was on forward brake reverse and then for the shocks open them up only got the rears done there was no oil whatsoever but i do i did notice it were a little bit moist so a little bit of, of leaking perhaps so i put some some green slime 
and then put some 50 weight oil on the rears for the next shakedown, shakedown ride and uh, seem much better than the All front. Right, here so is the, the top well. speed in first gear. Yes, that's peg. That's for the rock crawl segments, I guess. Any guesses? I would say like three miles an hour. Ooh, 4.8 miles an hour. All right. Flick of the switch, second gear. Much faster. Very tight steering radius. Check it out. 16.2 miles an hour. So not bad. And it's got some get up and go. Now that I control the punch. And it handles nicely. Good steering radius. Stabilizer bar. The speed was good and handling was good, so we'll take it out on a few little jumps on the mini ramp. The ramp is super narrow, but this thing went straight enough, easy enough to control, and it did okay. This is not what it's for, really, so you've got to be much caution, but there's the little first round shakedown.